today we are building a Threadripper build. For the ones who've been on the channel, uh, you know that I've been preparing this for a long, long time. Actually, I just came back from Canada where I've been shopping plenty on Black Friday weekend so I could complete uh, this crazy, amazing computer. And that's not just any computer, it will be my new editing computer. Uh, you'll remember that the last one I had was a 6900K, which I have assembled in a series of 10 different episodes in my insane CPU series. Very nice one. Um, but it is time to upgrade. And as you can tell, I'm a little bit tired, I did not shave, I am jet lagged, I'm, I'm literally falling apart. I got this mug right here, which is full of coffee and all the components, and to the only goal of keeping me awake enough to do this shooting, because I'm just too impatient and I don't want to wait anymore. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be a great journey, and I, I'm super excited about it, and I hope you are as well. So as you can see, we are going with the best of the best. Our computer will be equipped with the now very famous 1950X Threadripper CPU, supported by the ROG Zenith Extreme motherboard from Asus, 96 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM from G.Skill, very good looking Aura compliant RAM, about three terabyte of M.2 solid state drive, a fully modular 80 plus gold certified 850 watt PSU from Corsair, some Aura compliant strips, of course, we have the RX64 Vega as GPU. And finally, the all will be housed in the full tower Dark Base Pro 900 from Be Quiet. Cooling wise, we are going with a solid tubing solution provided by EKWB. We are going to water cool our GPU card as well as our processor in a single loop configuration, which will feature a 360 mm radiator, a 250 mm reservoir, and a D5 pump. Coolant wise, I have decided to go ahead with a cryo fuel blood red premix from EKWB. To prepare our case, we are first going to remove our tempered glass panel and on the other side of the chassis, the metallic side panel as well. Next, in order to fit in our 272mm EATX motherboard, we are going to remove all of the hard disk trays. Now that's a lot of thumb screws, so take your time. And if you're wondering about storage, do not worry, we have plenty of it with our 3TB of M.2 solid state drive sticks. Next, we are going to replace our two front panel fans. And to do so, we have to first disconnect them from the LED fan controller. In order to better access those two fans, we have to remove the front panel of our case and to do so, first removing the sliding hair filter of our chassis. Pressing a few pressure clips on the side of our front panel will allow you to remove it easily. And now, time to remove our two 140mm fans one at a time by removing the respective screws which hold them onto their holding bracket. Now is the time to take a look at the replacement fans, the so-called AER RGB140 from NZXT. Now what's special about those fans is of course the OLED RGB screens which is attached to each of them and they look absolutely gorgeous once put on, but they do require a little bit of installation. First, we need to connect them through the in and out cable in order to receive instructions from their controller box and simply use the extension cord which is provided in the box. And as you can see, I have just aligned them so that the in and out plugs face each other. Once done, we are going to use a longer extension cable which will be connected on the remaining in connector of one of the fans and the other extension will go of course to the hub connector which we will install at the very end of our build. Next, we simply have to secure those two 140mm fans in the place of the previous ones. Try to make a little bit of cable management at this stage uh, because we already have at least four cables dangling around there. And make sure that the OLED screens are pointing outward so that we can respect the push configuration of our fans. Time to take a closer look to our power supply unit. We have a RM850X from Corsair. It is a fully modular 850 watt 80 plus gold certified uh, power supply unit, meaning that it is very power efficient and will give us plenty of watt to power our Threadripper 1950X and our power hungry Vega 64 GPU. And before installing it, we have to secure in the four flat screws which will hold the PSU bracket. Once done, make sure to tighten those screws. Remember, finger tight is quite enough. 
Next, to have access to the bracket, we will need to remove the power supply unit shields from the back of our case. Simply follow the instructions on your screen, it shouldn't take you too long. Alright, now that we're done, we simply have to remove the three different segments of our PSU shield. Once done, we will have a clear access to the PSU bracket. The only thing left to be done here is to place the PSU into its bracket and secure it using the four screws provided with our power supply unit. The only thing left for this first video is to put back the three different segments of our PSU shield. Before doing so, make sure that the PSU external cable is connected to our power supply unit. This will allow us to isolate our power supply unit from the rest of the build and further minimize its sound footprint. Alright, our case is all ready for the rest of our series. Next up, the motherboard and CPU installation.